Praise the Lord. Happy Father's Day. To all the fathers out there, happy Father's Day. So we're going to read a scripture. Proverbs 23, 22 says, Hearken unto thy father that begat thee, and despise not thy mother when she's old. When she is old. Deuteronomy chapter 6, 1 and 1 to 9 says, Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that ye might do them in the land whither you go to possess it. That thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments which I command thee, thou and thy son and thy son's son, all the days of thy life. And that thy days may be prolonged. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily as the Lord God of thy fathers has promised thee, in a land that floweth with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. And talk of them, and shall talk of them when thou liest, sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontless between these, thine eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the posts of thine house and on thy gates. So this is talking about what fathers should teach their sons or the children and when fathers are christians it seems like their support for their children increases or in other words there is more responsibility there's a responsibility that god places upon the fathers to teach them of course about himself about god so the non-believing dad does not seem like he has the same obligations as a believing father. The Bible directs Christian dads, or even from way back in the time of Moses, for the people of God to teach their children. And the Christians should be doing the same. One thing is to care materially for their physical children. Another thing is to care spiritually for the children. In Deuteronomy, the idea is for dads to teach his own children about the concept of God, that God is one, and of course that there is no other but one God. So the first thing that he was to do was to teach his own family about that concept and of course to love God to have that concept where in his heart it says in verse number four here O Israel the Lord our God is one Lord and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul with all thy might and these words which I command these this day shall be in thine heart. Now, if it's in the heart of mankind, or in the Christian people, it should be something that is talked about regularly. For whatever is in the heart of man, that's what he likes to talk about. Where the treasure of the heart is. That is usually what he talks about. Amen. Amen. So, had it been done as much as God had told them to do it, you know, here he expresses it four different times. It says in verse number six and seven, And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently, and the children shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, when thou walkest by the way, when thou, when thou lie, liest down, and when thou risest up. Amen. So there were 
four different locations of teaching that should go on. And that um, teaching should go on because it is to avoid erroneous ideas that there is more than one God. For in repeating it and memorizing it and saying again and again, obviously the children of Israel had to memorize it. And then they would repeat it time and time again so that it would not bring up any erroneous ideas about God, about the concept that is there is only one God. And of course, in the Old Testament, a lot depended on who the king was. So the leader of the entire nation was an influence, a great influence, like the leader of the home. The leader of the home is a great influence, too. Was the king righteous? Did he believe in God? That had an impact. Just like dad in the home has a more influence and more impact on the family than if somebody else in the family only believes. If the dad believes in God, that it follows that most of the time the children will also believe or follow dad. The dad has a lot of influence more influence than other siblings or more influence than even mom in following God. Dad is like the backbone of the family, especially in spiritual guidance. As God, our Heavenly Father, taught us to teach the children the idea that God is one. They were to repeat that over and over and over again. Of course, that's verse number four. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And within that verse it says, God is one, 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 God is one. So we're repeating that over and over again. So that doesn't bring up a different philosophy about God because God is one and even into the New Testament, going into the New Testament, that does not change. God does not change that, that he is one. So, Christian fathers should teach their children that God is one. And uh, the children of Israel were taught that they should say it again and again and again. That is, possibly four times a day, repeating it. And so there should be teaching that going on about this fact. Today we have the idea, or the, we know that, that God is one, but we know that Jesus is that one God. So teaching should occur when dads and children rise up in the morning. Early in the morning there should be a teaching about him. That's what the... Deuteronomy says, one can think about the past times that everything was done at a slower pace. And that probably meant more individual work had to be done, such as getting the water, washing the clothes. And all of this took a lot more time out of the day and working too to provide for the family. Thus, one could find himself busy very easily, yet there may have been more time spent with the children for, depending on their jobs, and what is I understand the Israelites were doing is that they, the fathers, would teach their children to abide in the same occupation, so that it corresponds with uh, the lineage you know, the Levites, all the fathers that were Levites, their children were also Levites. They, If they were priests, their sons would become priests. So one could find himself very busily, yet they were taught to teach their children the occupation that they themselves had. During that time, they didn't have all this computerized technology, internet television, and a host of other things that are so um, attracting people's attention. But back in those days, they had 
you know, a lot slower day, maybe, in trying to get things done. We didn't have cars. Of course, they did have, or they could have had horses, but the poor people may not have. So if one was, for example, a carpenter, Joseph, as he was a carpenter, and the adoptive dad of Jesus Christ, Joseph would teach Jesus about carpentry. And anybody, for example, the dad of John and, and James and Peter and Andrew, their dads were fishermen, so they were fishermen. So they followed in the same occupation as their dads. And so they would teach their children the occupation that they had, but also one very, very important part of their life, according to Deuteronomy, was to teach their children the concept of one God. And so this was kind of like an inheritance passed on about the teaching and also about their occupation. So that was a familial duty. It was their duty to teach their children their occupations. This is the reason why in the Old Testament, if the dads and his ancestors were priests, the children would also be priests. If the dads were farmers or fishermen, carpenters, bricklayers, or whatever occupation the father had, he would teach his own children to be in that particular occupation. That was kind of like an inheritance that the dad taught his children his occupation. The children likewise would have a skill that they could depend upon. And Paul, he had the skill of tent making. The mothers toward the daughters would teach the daughters, you know, certain things that women would do, especially back in those days, the cooking, other household chores, making clothes, repairing clothes, things that mothers would do. That is what the Old Testament was like. What is profound about these verses in Deuteronomy is the fact that the profoundness of teaching from one father or from father to son was a requirement actually placed upon the heads of the family. That is what God had laid out to Moses and Moses instructed them, and then later on, the fathers instructed their children. So it was in line with the fact that God was one, and the commandments of God, what were the commandments of God? Dads would instruct his children in the ways of God. Today, a lot of the teaching takes place in public schools. You have the children going into the public schools, but that does not take away the responsibility because we know, as many people always know, and they say that public schools do not teach about God. And that's a bad thing, many people say, but the responsibility is actually upon the dads to teach about one God. In fact, well, if you send your children to, to, to um, the public schools, somebody is teaching about God, well, they may be just of a different religion and they might even not be in the same faith. But when we have this concept, we know this concept, we teach the fact of one God. Amen. So Christian children grow up, some might grow up in public schools. However, they responsibility for Christian dads remains the same. God still requires that the dads teach about the fact that God is one. They had a responsibility who God is and the commandments of God. Today we know his name. We know his name was not revealed in the Old Testament as the name Jesus, but it was in the beginning of the New Testament that his name had been revealed. Thus, it is Jesus. Jesus is the name of God. That is, it is the name of God the Father, the Creator. Jesus is the name of the one who was born of the Virgin as the Son of God. And he, so he is named the Son of God, but he is also the one who 
comes into humanity, he is the Holy Spirit as well. Jesus has done more than one thing for humanity. He has created everything. He has come into this life as a human being. He's also come into human beings' lives. The same one that created is the same one that came into this life and lived among men and died for humanity, shedding his blood, and also the one who, res well, we can say that the same one who comes into human life. Of course, God resurrected the, the, the man, Christ Jesus, from the dead. Hallelujah. So Jesus has done more than one thing for humanity as a whole. He created us. He came and died for us. He desires to come into us because of his sacrifice. He then, we can say, is our heavenly father. The duty then of Christian people, no matter if they are fathers, sons, daughters, or mother, if, is to recognize and honor our heavenly father. We recognize, of course, our physical dads. The world goes ahead and recognizes recognizes their physical dads but the church has an op 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 opportunity here to recognize who our heavenly father is on father's day amen because really truly he is due all honor all glory and he is due our regard during this time of father's day so in the world, they would recognize just the physical fathers, but we also have a heavenly father that we should, or we can promote and recognize. And it is important to recognize Jesus. Sometimes Jesus is left out of many things. He wants to be a part. He wants to be recognized. The question would be, if you were the one who was the maker of something, made it, into a show, hired the actors, taught them their lines, did all this work, would it not be right to have others know that you were the one who put it all together? This is similar to God. God created the world, but he also decided this was the plan from the foundation of the world, that he would become a human being, that God would be come, or come into this life as a human being, and, of course, he would be give his own life for humanity, that which he created. But he did not come into this life to give his life for angels or for any other animals or any of those things. He gave his life for humanity. So how much more human beings should give thanks and praise the Almighty God. There's no other in the entire universe that could do such a thing like that. Only God could put it forth and do so. Thus it follows that when humanity gives Jesus the credit, we should give credit for the fact that he is the one who created us. He is the one who came into his life as a human being. He is the one who comes into us. It is the one who did it all and he should be given the credit for it. And so whenever the person who did these things or whatever, whatever um, a person did for his product or whatever it is good that he is given the credit for it, thus it is that much more important, we could say eternally, to give God the credit for what he has really done. One would say that if one does not give credit or honor, you know, for example, one product to one person puts it in. If, the, if people are not given that person that credit, it would, it would kind of be like an injustice. God should be recognized. He should be honored. He is our Heavenly Father. Amen. And so that would be considered... You know, the highest honor that we can bestow is to truly recognize what God has done for humanity, giving him the praise, the recognition, the honor that comes along with for what he has done for humanity. Amen. That's the reason why God gave such a commandment to the fathers to teach their children 
was because he did not want others to discredit him or to come up with another idea that God is more than one. So he wanted that recognition of who he is and that he was the one um, you know, that did all of this for them, did it all for us. Amen. He created mankind. He gave mankind life. He is the life giver. And so he provides to us eternal life. Hallelujah. So it is similar to recognizing or knowing who Jesus is, to recognize that he alone is the Father, he is the Son, he is the Holy Spirit, is exactly what the God wants people to recognize. The teaching of the one God, the teaching it is that God is Jesus, that Jesus is God. He alone, it says here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And Jesus, of course, is that one Lord, the ruler. God deserves that recognition. He created mankind. He created the universe. He himself, no, not just another, not another. He himself came into this life as a human being. And he comes into humanity. And we mention it as the Holy Spirit. He is Jesus. To give him credit for that is to recognize and know, hey, he is our true Father. Amen. To take this idea from Deuteronomy, place it into the perspective of today, how often should we, we remind people, hey, Jesus is God. Jesus is truly God. That is really a good thing to do. This should be talked about. This should be remembered. This should be uh, talked about when we are um, eating or whatever. Whatever we do, it is a good thing to talk about it. To give him credit is to recognize and to know our true Father. Amen. Thus, to take this idea from Deuteronomy, place it into his perspective of today, how often should we remind you know, spiritual children? That God, that Jesus is the one and true God. He is the one who is the Father. He is the one who is the builder of the church. He is building the church. It is he who wants the credit for it. He wants to be known as the Father. He wants to be known as the founder. He wants to be known as the Lord. He wants the recognition. He wants the honor. Amen. This is important to realize. It is important to help Christians know how truly important it is to help them with the recognition of the fact that Matthew chapter 28 and verse number 19 points to Jesus Christ, the name, the one to baptize in. For then he is recognized as our true father and he is the one who gives us life gives us forgiveness, gives us salvation. And only he can give salvation, no one else. How many times do we recognize others without giving credit? We need to give credit to God, our true Father. That's important. That's honorable to do. That is true kindness to him. That is giving him honor. This concept should be teached or taught, excuse me, this concept should be taught orally, but extends, the verse in Deuteronomy not only says it should be done orally, but it says that it should be written to. The fact should be written by the people of God. It was a commandment to speak of it on a daily basis, but it was also a commandment to have it written. Whoa. Hallelujah. One could say that the written aspect of it, writing it down for future and uh, generations to understand, uh, and then come in contact with it and, and ex explore this idea more in, 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 in a way that 
the, the next generation can understand it and realize how important it is, then the future generations can really know the truth and know that God needs to be recognized like this. They need to know that Jesus is the true, the God, and eternal life. He is the life. He gives us his spirit, and we can have eternal life. The teaching does not have to be a whole lot long. It just has to remind people that God is one, that Jesus is the true God. Amen. And to love that true God with all one's heart. When one is in his house, when one is, you know, doing whatever, it is important to remind children of this concept. In reality, how often has a dad done this? Even in our day, this is instruction from God. And I suppose, in fact, I believe the reason why God has given this is for the fact that in doing so, it would bring about a change of heart even the, in the lives of children. That is, no matter how many children the dads and moms would have, the best way to teach them is to follow the advice of what God had instructed here. Amen. Even though many may not have done it in the past, it is time to do it in the present. Amen. The past cannot be changed, but the present can be once but the pre present can be once we learn about what to do and put it into action. In other words, it is the counsel of God, the advice of God to do so in this manner. Why so? It is to guard against any other, uh, any other spirit, against any other doctrine regarding God. God is a jealous God. He alone wants all the glory for what he has done for humanity. To recognize our Father is to recognize who is the true Father. Who then should people, that is Christian people, recognize as their Father? To recognize our physical dads is important. How much more important is it to recognize and honor our Heavenly Father? It is possible to look at the following scripture in Isaiah chapter 9, 6 to 7, it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of, his, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, and to order it, and to establish it with justice, with judge, judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So here in this verse, verse number six, he's a son, he's a counselor, and he is the everlasting father. Amen. So recognize, recognition and honor should be given where recognition and honor is due. The world really only honors their earthly dads, but Christians can and they should honor their fa Heavenly Father and on the day that is Father's Day, for he truly deserves honor. One of the things that many do not comprehend, maybe, or connect is this fact, Heaven. Uh, Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. <laughs> we can honor the true Father, our God. Amen. So Jesus will reveal himself to those who obey his commandments. And of course, the world does not have that opportunity. But John chapter 14, 15 to 26 says this, if you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, 
neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while in the world seeth me no more, but ye see me. Because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in the Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Judas saith unto him, Not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us, and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him, and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings. And the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Here, written within this portion of Scripture, it declares that Jesus will be manifested unto the ones who keep his commandments. There is Scripture regarding who Jesus him manifested himself to and who does not receive the revelation of who Jesus is. Judas, not Iscariot, figured that he wanted to know how that was possible. We know that it is possible. Jesus gave the reason. The difference is in those who obey him, those who do not obey him. There is a revelation of who Jesus is. Is Thus, why would people not want to obey him and his word? To obey his commandment is to have a revelation or to get one in future of Jesus. There may be some that have a dim light as to who Jesus is, but the way to clear it up is to get a true revelation of Jesus Christ. And it is to obey his word. So here, it was referring to receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit, that is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit will be received by those who are obeying his word, the commandments of Jesus Christ. Jesus commanded his disciples to wait in the city of Jerusalem until they ye be endured with power from on high. So to obey is to seek after the Holy Spirit. Jesus said that there would be a revelation and the Spirit of God would be given, poured out. Verse 21 states that the revelation would come upon the person. Verse 23 says, the person who obeys God will also receive of the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God will be the one who teaches. Furthermore, it is contained within the scripture that the Holy Spirit is Jesus Christ. Verse 26 mentions the fact that the Comforter would be sent in the name of Jesus. Thus, to ask for the Holy Spirit, one simply needs to ask in Jesus' name. For Jesus is the Comforter. In Matthew chapter 3, and verse number 11, it says, I indeed baptize you with water, Unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Thus, the question is, who is the he in this verse? The he in this verse is Jesus. John the Baptist preached this. The idea for Christian folks is to understand who that real father is who the real father is what is the name of the heavenly father to understand the name of the father is to understand truly who is our heavenly father he is jesus he is god john the baptist like everyone who teaches the truth knows that ministers can baptize people but only God can baptize with the Holy Spirit and with fire. The minister would love to see people filled with the Holy Spirit, but 
only John, John the Baptist was the one who said that he could only baptize in water, but Jesus was the one who could baptize in the Spirit. Amen. Praise God. So, in other words, we have to ask Jesus Christ for the Holy Spirit. And he will do it if we seek for it. He said, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be open unto you. So he will give us the Holy Spirit for he is the life. No one can provide forgiveness of sins, but Jesus Christ, that is that name in water, baptism, that is the highest name. That is the name for salvation. That is the name that we pray to and ask him to receive the Holy Spirit. So that is why it is so important to know who Jesus is. No one can no one else can provide the Holy Spirit. Only Jesus can, according to John the Baptist, when he said, Matthew 3, 11. To recognize who Jesus is, is the idea, ideal for Father's Day. To recognize him, hey, he's our Heavenly Father. He is to re be recognized. He is to be honored. He is to be glorified on this day, for it is his day. He created it. He is our Heavenly Father. Amen. Thus, I invite you to seek after Jesus, our Heavenly Father, and honor him today for his life. He made all things. He created us. He has given us so much. He deserves thanks like no one else. He deserves it all. In the name of Jesus. God bless you.